Good morning. As we study some more of the Psalms here, we've been studying for a while, and we're going to be over in Psalm 46 today. I want to do 42, but I, we'll wait. It's a little bit longer. 46 isn't that quite that long, so we'll try to cover it in the next couple of days. But it talks about the presence of God in calamity. It's the title of my of my study Bible here, and it talks about what it means to face calamity in life. And, we really don't know what was going on uh, at this time the psalm was written, but uh, some think it was written during the days of Hezekiah when the uh, Assyrians were attacking uh, the Judah or Jerusalem, Judah, and uh, all the things were going on. But, uh, you know, you just stop and think about what, what would really, what's your greatest fear? Uh, what, is, what would really send you in like, like a tailspin? Uh, we have things like, you know, some people fear, you know, losing a spouse, uh, losing a child. Uh, maybe I get in dementia or one of those mental illnesses or you know, all kind of things. And I just want to just read a, a little bit over of the book of Job. And you're all familiar with the book of Job and what happened to Job, how uh, Satan come into it. God allowed Satan to attack him and, you know, he lost livestock and, and he, <clears throat> he lost his wealth. And, and uh, finally he ended up losing all of his children and uh, then he lost his health. And so we had, you know, says everything was uh, piling up on Job. And if I, I'm going to look over in uh, chapter 3 and uh, verse 25. So Job chapter 3, verse 25, if you want to mark it down, it says, For the, the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is coming to me. And uh, actually, if we, uh, in the Hebrew, if we wanted to change the wording a little bit, we'd say, he said, I feared a fear, and it came upon me. So he said, I, I had this fear, and it finally it happened. And so we, how we deal with those things, and that's kind of where this, this psalm is at. And sometimes in life we face these different challenges, and our, our faith is even tested sometimes with these things. And, you know, we, we look and we say, God, why? So this, this psalm here is written, and it kind of gives us a, um, a place to go. I, you know, I just heard the other day about this person that was having a lot of mental problems. And, uh, and how they went to the scriptures and they got uh, some comfort and got peace through the scripture and, and helped them to, to <coughs> excuse me, overcome. So let's look at Psalm 46 and we're going to start off with verse 1. Okay, Psalm 46, verse 1. A God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So we'll break those down. I always like to look at what the words actually mean. So we say God is a refuge. <coughs> excuse me. Is a refuge. He's a, he's a shelter from danger. And we see that in different psalms. We've talked about that. He's a place to go, a refuge where you can be protected. Uh, back in the day and time of the Old Testament, they would go to the walled cities. Uh, Jerusalem had the great walls around it, and uh, if you look over at Babylon, Babylon had uh, big walls around it, and those big cities they they would have the walls to protect them, so people could flee to those places, and then there would be protection there. There would be the uh, the military would be there, you know, to have the walls around them, the gates and so forth, so uh, they could have that place to go. And that's what this is. This is uh, for you and I now as a. Uh, when we're in that trouble, when the, the worst things happen to us, or they don't have to be so uh, catastrophic, but they can be bad things happen to us, and we get sometimes feel overwhelmed. See, he says, where? He said, God is our refuge. So how, how is God our refuge? And I like to look a little bit and see what, what that means, what it means that God is our refuge. Well, first of all, I know that I can go to the Word of God. Okay, we're the, the blessing that you and I have we're on this side of the cross, we're on this side of the, the death, burial, and resurrection. So we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. So I have the Holy Spirit within me, and I have the Word of God. So I can pray, talk to the Lord in the power of the Spirit, through the Son, to the Father, go to His uh, throne of grace, and then I can take and get comfort and peace from and uh, encouragement from the Word of God. So we, we have this. So when I look, when I need that help, and, uh, you know, it's... I always think about the fact that it's easy, you know, for me to sit here today and to share that with you. And uh, but when the when the tough times come, sometimes they come uh, slowly, and you see it coming, and so you kind of brace yourself for it. And sometimes it's just there. And so how we respond to that? So we you have to keep in mind that we have this place to go, and and not only that, to have the comfort that we can have that help when we go to the Lord. 
It's, it's not superficial. It's not something out there that's just there like you'd read a book. No, it's, it's from inside we have that power to get the comfort, to get the peace. And so when the troubles come, he said, God is our refuge. I have a place to go and I can... Uh, he can give me some courage so that we see the word strength now, refuge and strength, so he can give me courage and strength in these times. So, but we, you know, it's one of those things that you you have to to believe it. This, this is where your faith comes in. Uh, this is where you really, when you, when you're challenged, this is do you really believe what God says? Do I really believe that I can get a, have a refuge that I can get protection? Uh, do I really believe that He is He's my courage in danger? That He can strengthen me? He can give me a peace in the midst of the storms of my life. See, it, it's a, it's not a matter of just reading the scripture. It goes deeper than it. It's when I take the scripture, I read this verse and I take it in. I make it part of me. And what the, the best way that we can do that to make it uh, uh, really there for us when we need it is as we face the smaller challenges in life. And we all go through all kinds of things. To, to remember this and to claim these promises and just to do it, act on it. You know, because uh, maybe, maybe you're having trouble at work and you know, job's in jeopardy, or maybe you've just been laid off, and that, that can be a, a, a traumatic experience. But the idea that a lot of these things aren't, aren't devastating. There's ways that we get around, ways we can deal with it. But we still can go to God for the place of refuge and strength to help us get through those times. He goes a little bit further here. He says, and he's a, a very, listen, a very present help. So we know that he is present. He's with us all the time. We're Again, we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God, so we have that power, that presence within us. But if I take that word, and I, I wrote it down here in my Bible, uh, it, it, this word, uh, present help, has the idea it emphasizes the speed, the completeness, and the, the might of the Lord's help. See, it's the speed, the completeness, and the, the help is right there. When I need it, it's right there. Uh, the word trouble that we see there right after that, trouble means it's a, um, uh, how do I say, it means that you're, you're closed in. It's like you're being pressed in from all sides. You ever get that feeling where he's overwhelmed? And so he, this this one verse, we can see here that we have a place that we can go for, for a refuge. We have a place that we can go to get strength. We have a place to go to, that I can get help when I'm in that place and when I feel like I'm being overwhelmed. And so if you ever have that have that problem, if you ever get in that position, uh, remember this verse. Remember these verses. We're going to be covering some more of this. But as you look at these verses, and not only, uh, I, I say claim it, and I hate to say it like that, but, you know, make it real to you. Make the verse, like this little verse right here, it's very small, a uh, few words, but it's got so much in it to help us when we're in a distress. But first of all, what you have to do, you have to know Christ as your Savior, don't you? You have to know Him and have that personal relationship with the Father through the Son. And then you have this place to go. See, without Christ, without that relationship with the Father through the Son, you can pray, but God's not responsible to answer your prayers. You're, you're an enemy of His. The Bible says we're at enmity with God until we come to know Christ as our Savior. So what you need to do today is understand that you need more than this world can give you. And what we do is we prepare for eternity. So what I need to do today, I repent. I just turn from the world, I turn from this old world that has so much wickedness and heartache and problems. I turn to God, put my faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for my sin. Then I'm forgiven of my sin, the penalty of sin is gone, I'm born into the family of God. And when those tough times come, and they come to whether you're Christian or not Christian, they come. Whenever they come, you have a place you can go, you have a refuge, you have a place of strength, you have a present help in those tough times. But you need to do that. You need to be born again, born into the family of God, and you have eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. We pray we would be found faithful. And Lord, that we not forget uh, your word and when we face those hard times in life, that we not uh, panic or, or give up, but we stand firm, Lord, in your word. And these kind of words that you give us right here in this psalm are good words, they're true words, Lord, and that we can count on them. For those who don't know Christ, we pray this would be the day, Lord, that truly be the day they would repent and put their faith in Christ. He paid the price. He went through all the work. He shed his blood. The work has been done. Uh, everything is ready. All they need to do is turn to you and put their faith in Jesus, and they'll have eternal life. We thank you for what you're going to do. For in Jesus' name, amen.